all right welcome back to another video so in this video we're going to go ahead and create a next js project from scratch well not from scratch but using the cli tool and we're going to generate all of the project files and then i'm going to just walk you through um, the project files and that way we become more familiar with our environment and then in the next episode we're going to get started with learning the basic concepts of next js so i am going to mention that you want to make sure that you have the prerequisites so on the next js docs it does uh have it mentioned that you need node.js version 12.22 uh, at the current time of this video being recorded okay so make sure you have at least uh node.js version 12.22 um and that's really it of course All, obviously the things to do is make sure you have uh, a text editor and yeah that's pretty much it we are going to be uh using typescript okay just wanted to throw that out there so to create a next.js project using the cli tool you can do it two ways and this is directly from the documentation so if you're watching this video maybe like a year or two years later and if it has changed if you're getting any errors definitely consult the docs okay but as of uh recently this is how you can create a simple next application so if you want to use npx all you just do is type npx create hyphen next hyphen app at latest okay so it's similar to when you wanted to use create react app you just do npx and then create react app and then the name of the application but instead we're going to do create next app at latest okay now i'm going to go ahead and use yarn instead so i'm going to do yarn create next app okay and that's what the docs suggest as well okay so i'm also going to add the typescript flag because we want to use typescript and if you uh, haven't learned typescript or if you are in the process of learning it i definitely encourage you to continue and typescript is very 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 powerful and once you learn it you cannot go back to javascript okay so we're going to go ahead and hit enter so this is going to prompt us uh and we have to give our project a name so whatever you name your project it's going to create a folder for that project okay in our current directory which is the documents folder so I'm going to call, go ahead and call this my Next.js tutorial. And it will take a couple seconds, honestly. It shouldn't take too long to generate our files. Typically less than like, yeah, that was like less than like 10 seconds. Okay. So uh, it, it installed a couple dependencies. So uh, I'll just run through real quick what it installed. It installed React and React DOM. Okay, that's uh, that's obviously the, the required dependencies because we are using react okay we're not using angular or any other syntax we're still using react to build the ui components okay next itself is just a framework that groups together the react library with a bunch of other packages that the next developers created to build more powerful applications okay also install the next library of course or the next framework other stuff to install eslint eslint config uh, for Next.js, and because we're using TypeScript, and install the TypeScript dependency as a dev dependency. Okay, so let's go ahead and first let's cd into my Next.js tutorial, which is the folder that was just generated. And I'm going to go ahead and open up Visual Studio Code with this project. And before I actually go through the files, let me go ahead and run yarn dev, which is the script that is going to run our application in dev mode and you're going to see how fast that it starts up our server so i can now go to localhost port 3000 and you're going to see that it opens up the application immediately so let me go back here whoops whoops you can see how fast the server was opened up if i exit and if i uh refresh right it's going to currently load but if i run yarn dev again you're going to see how fast the server spins up if we were to use create react app it would take literally like a million years to load up the application so it's a lot faster with next okay um so let's go through the files very quickly so the first file that i want to talk about is the next.config.js file we'll definitely uh look into this file later on into the series but for now, don't worry so much about it. All you got to know is that this file is going to be used for configuring next. 
So I'll actually pull up the documentation here. So you can create more advanced configurations uh, if you want to. Some of the things that you'll probably do inside this config.js file, like I said, would be configuring something like localization and it will pretty much set the routes for you so you don't have to implement that yourself. Okay, so if you have a bunch of routes already configured with your next app in the pages, um, it'll prefix those routes with, let's say, for example, like EN, ES for Spanish, uh, F4 for French, right? It'll prefix them for you and then you can just render different content based off of the, uh, the localized route. Okay, but like I said, don't worry about this for now. We'll talk about it later. Okay, you have your other self-explanatory files such as the readme, packs.json, um, which you can take a look at the scripts. Okay, I want to talk about the scripts real quick. So the dev script, which is the one that we just ran, runs our application in dev mode. Fun fact, uh, Next.js 12 was recently released about like three to four months ago. And it's actually a, a lot more optimized with the compiler. I think it's entirely based off of Rust, if I remember correctly. And Rust is really, really powerful, very fast. So you can imagine that's part of the that's one of the major reasons why Next itself is ridiculously fast. So just wanted to throw it out there. Uh, so you'll use the dev script when you're developing your Next.js application on your local machine. When you're ready to serve your application, um, you're going to go ahead and obviously want to build your Next app. And then you're going to run Next Start to start the application for production. Okay. Um, if you want to, you know, set up, if you want to like, you know, uh, configure linting or not configure, but run like the lint script, you can do that yourself. Okay. It's pretty self explanatory Like I said, um, okay, that's pretty much it. And you can also, the nice thing about Next.js is that you can actually override a lot of stuff. If you want to customize, uh, Babel, you can easily do that by creating your own Babel.babelrc uh, .babel file or Babel.config.js. And you can add your own presets, you can add your own plugins, you can do whatever you want. The nice thing about Next out of the box, unlike with Create React App, is you can literally configure uh, like anything you want. Okay, with Create React App, everything was encapsulated, and the only way that you can configure it is by ejecting the uh, the application itself. Okay, but you can literally customize Webpack, customize Babel without needing to worry about the abstractions that Next.js hides from the developer. Okay, so that's just uh, something that you might want to look into if you're eager enough to dive into that. Uh, okay, cool. So let's go into... Oh, and also, if you're using TypeScript, it's going to generate the tsconfig.json file, which I'm assuming that uh, you'll know what exactly uh, this file is for. If you want to configure uh, the behavior of the compiler and how it will compile the application for you, you definitely want to configure all of those properties inside this tsconfig.json file. All right. So now let's go into the actual files that we'll be working with. So let's start off with the pages folder. Okay. So this is where you're going to configure all of your routes. Okay. So just a quick preview. Let's say, for example, if you want to create a route for dashboard, for example, right? All you'll need to do is inside the pages folder, create a new file, call it dashboard.tsx. If you're using uh, JavaScript, you would obviously name it .jsx, okay? And what we're gonna do is, I'm just gonna quickly just create a simple dashboard page. And I'm gonna just type annotate this as a next page, okay? Don't worry, I'm gonna explain all this in the next tutorial where we're gonna actually introduce routing, but I just wanna show you, um, whoops, how this actually works. So you need to make sure that it's exported as a default export. So what next will actually do is it's going to take this file name that's inside the pages folder and it's going to map it to a route. So if we go to our app and if I add slash dashboard, you're going to see that it's going to return next page or let me change this to dashboard page. And you can see that it returns literally the rendered output Okay, so no need for React Router. The Next.js Router uh, takes care of all this stuff for us. Okay, like I said, next episode, we'll dive more deeper into routing. So I just wanted to just show you a quick preview. Uh, something pretty cool that you can do with Next. Okay, uh, so pretty much all of the pages, you're going to have to add them inside this pages folder. Okay, uh, there's also this API folder. So Next also gives you a, a built-in API layer. So if you want to use that API layer to take care of stuff such as 
fetching remote resources from another API. Um, if you want to have it connect to a database, you can do that. But most of the time, you probably won't need to do that because you can actually, well, at least according to Next Docs, it recommends that you don't use the API layer to connect to stuff like databases. It actually recommends you to use uh, certain built-in functions that it provides for you, which we will look into later to connect to the database, get the data, and then send it to your components. Okay, but if you ever needed the, if you ever want to use the API, you could. So for example, if I visit the slash API route, uh, oh, whoops, it's slash API slash hello.ts. Actually not hello.ts, just hello. You're going to see that it returns some JSON. Okay, and that's this handler over here. If I wanted to create a new file, I'll call this users.ts and I'll just copy and paste the code from here inside here. And I'll just return, uh, let me get rid of this type. I'm not going to type annotate it. So that way I can just return whatever I want. I'll just return an empty array. And if I go to slash users, it's going to return a JSON object with the users property, which is just an empty array. Okay, so you can imagine that inside this handler, you could probably connect to a database. You can use something like node fetch or Axios and make an API call to some other external API. And then you can serve it back to the client. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Uh, other stuff, the two, this is just the default homepage that you see right over here. Okay, just all the boilerplate, which we're not really going to worry about. We'll actually delete that later. And then you have this underscore app.tsx file. So this is where it will actually take all the pages and it will render it for you. Okay, so you can think of this like a uh, kind of like a high level or a high order component where it just it just takes in a component and just returns that component and passes in the props. Okay, other stuff, uh, you can see that we have the styles folder. This is where all of the global CSS is uh is uh implemented here and it gets it gets uh, imported inside app.tsx so if we wanted to change up any css we would change it over here uh, next also supports css modules so it's a good way to create modular css and you can actually reference the class names uh, as object properties which we will you know which we'll, we'll go over briefly in this uh in this tutorial series okay but yeah all of the styles are over here okay uh, and then we have the public folders. We have the favorite icon. We have the uh, the vector for the uh, the Verso logo, which is the uh, the organization or the company that developed uh, Next.js. Okay, and um, yeah. So like I said, we're gonna look at a lot of stuff in this tutorial series. So a lot of things that you're probably wondering, such as how can we optimize our website uh, so that it has uh, so that it's SEO performant. How how can we add custom header tags? Or custom head tags how can we add custom you know css how can we do all of those things all of those things will be covered in this tutorial and i'm going to show you how to do that okay so uh that's going to be pretty much it for this uh introductory uh video to next.js in the next episode we're going to dive deep into routing in next.js okay so i'm going to see you all in that next episode peace out